Welcome back, folks. I hope you are still enjoying the show. This is Tenfold Life, proudly brought to you by Liberty. And it comes to you every weekday from Monday to Thursday from 5 p.m. until 6 p.m. So do make sure that you always make a date with us. You will always benefit a lot of very interesting stuff that is happening that we're discussing on the show. In addition, you stand a chance to win awesome prizes, such as a TV. Somebody has just won a TV by just sending us a question. Who knows? Maybe next time is going to be you guys. Now, we're going to go to our very interesting slot, which is called the wild card. Well, a wild card is nothing but a question that is off topic, where we give you the opportunity to ask us anything across the mathematical uh, content that you're going to be writing on. You want to see this current world card that we're dealing with. It's coming from Trigonometry and it's from Dan Ndoleni. Let's go and check it out. Hi, Tenfold. Please help me with this question. Right, thank you for that question, Dan Dulaini. Very nice question indeed. It's a trick question, guys, that is asking us to prove that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. Now, in trigonometry, I always tell people this. You need to know all the seven wonders. I call them the seven wonders of trig, all the subtopics of trig, because any one of them can be asked inside the other one. Right. But this one is coming straight from proving identities, where we have to prove one side is equal to the other side. Now, generally speaking, you just need to pick one side and simplify it until it looks like the other one. So you just pick the one that is a little bit complicated or the one that you feel like you can do something on, work on it. If you get stuck, go get the other one and simplify it until it gets somewhere. The somewheres must look the same. If they do, then you have proved that those things are equal. Right, so now let's go and check out what this wild card is saying to us. It says to us that we need to prove that the cos of 3x divided by the cos of x is as, as the same as 2 cos 2x minus 1. Okay, cool. So once I look at this, before I even go anyway, I just simply see that we actually have a, an interesting double angle that is going on here. The double angle of cosine, and there's actually three of them in total. If you remember the um, expansion of the cos of something plus something else, right? Cos of A plus B is actually going to be cos cos. So it's cos A, cos of B, if it's a plus, you're gonna say minus, sine of A and sine of B. I'm writing this because I can see we are dealing with cosine. I'm hoping that this is going to do something here. In addition, I see a double angle of cos. What do you know about a double angle of cos? Well, we know that it's got three personalities. Cos of two times something has got three versions. Now, you don't rush when you see this one. You know when they say relax, uh, take things easy. This is where you actually need to take things e uh, easy because if you rush, you're likely to make a mistake with the double angle of cosine. Don't touch it until you are done with everything else and there's nothing you can do on it. So this can be expressed as cos squared x minus sine squared x. It can also be written as 2 cos squared x minus 1. It can also be written as 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Right, there is also the double angle of sine, which we might need. Let me squeeze it somewhere. I'm going to squeeze it right there. Right, the sine of 2x is basically 2 sine x cos of x. And when we meet others, we can always go back and find them. They're available on your formula sheet, aka uh, the information sheet, not that aka, this aka. Anyway, yeah, um, you just have to go to your formula sheet and look at them. You'll be able to find them. They're very nice and interesting. You can actually pick the correct one and use it. You get marks for just knowing which one you need to use. Now, I'm going to go and take one side that I feel can actually be simplified. And according to me, I feel like the left hand side has got some juice. Let's see what we can do. The left hand side equals to the cosine of 3x divided by the cos of x. Right, so that 3x is the sum of two angles, which I'm going to call um, 2x plus x divided by the cos of x. Let's uh, run with this and see how far we can get with this very exciting identity. According to expansion of cos something plus something, it's actually going to be cos cos. So it's cos 2x times cos x. If it's a plus, you'll say minus. Sine 2x times sine of x. Everything divided by the cosine of x. Now, there is a very interesting identity, uh, a skill. It's an algebraic skill that I always use. It says if you've got a plus b over c, you can simplify it to a over c plus b over c. You can sh actually share the denominator in this case and give it to each one of the terms that are on the numerator. I'm going to apply that technique where if you look at this, this is going to be my A and this is going to be my B. So I'm going to share it to all those that you're looking at right now. So I'll say, okay, this is cos 2x multiplied by cos x divided by cos x minus um, sine 2x sine of x 
divided by the cos of 2x. So let's see what happens if you check this. You'll notice that cos x appears on both sides. So this cos x will cancel that cos x on the numerator. They divide each other to give you a value of 1, which when you simplify, you will now be sitting with cos of 2x minus. Now here, something very nice is happening. There's the double angle of cosine, I mean of sine. Sine 2x, which can be written as 2 sine x cos of x. And that old sine x we've always had there, I'm going to actually bring it back, which is going to be sine x divided by the cosine of x. Right, if you simplify further, you will notice again, we do have cancelling terms. This cos x can cancel that cos x there, leaving us with something very interesting here. Cos 2x minus 2 sine x sine x is actually 2 sine squared x. Now, since everything must be in terms of cos, if you look there, what we are proving only has cosine, there's no sine of it. So sine must go. Right, so I'm going to have to do something about it. I'm going to use the square's identity. Right, remember sign can be written as 1 minus cos squared x, which will simply simplify to cos 2x. If you multiply, you are sitting with minus 2, minus times minus is positive 2 cos squared x. Quite nice and very awesome indeed. Now, I want a double angle of cosine since the uh, right-hand side you're proving has double angle of cosine. So I'm going to leave this one, cos 2x. And I'm going to manipulate myself I'm going to manipulate this one, this one for myself so that it actually is going to suit me. I'm going to put first this 2 cos squared x. The minus 2, I'll call it minus 1, minus 1. If you remember, one of the identities is this one. One of the squares identity, the double angle identity, I mean, of cosine is 2 cos squared x minus 1. Then I'm going to take it there and say we've got the first cos 2x. And we also have, there's another one, the second one, is also another double angle of cos. That's cos 2x minus 1. When you add them, you will simply get two of those guys. Two cos 2x minus a 1. And then, finally, you're going to say, therefore, the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side, which is basically what we had to prove. Very nice indeed and not complicated at all. As long as you understand your expansion formulas and your double angles, you'll be able to actually have fun with this. Thank you very much for that wild card. We're still coming back with a lot of very exciting content. Don't go anywhere. Stay with us.